this Ganga Devi who has come, she is very purifying. She purifies all of us. But it is said that Vaishnavas, pure devotees of Krishna, are even more superior than Ganga Devi also. Why? There is, uh, uh, the Acharyas explain that Ganga Devi touched the feet of Vishnu once and she has become so glorious. But a devotee is always at the feet of Vishnu. So how purifying a devotee can be? And when we say devotee, we should always think of another devotee. We should not think of ourselves. Oh, I am greater than Ganga Devi. You know, we should not think of ourselves like that because we are not. Each one of us, all of us are sadhakas. We are just trying to become devotees. So if someone asks you, since when are you a devotee? They say, I am still not a devotee. I am aspiring to be a devotee. I am trying. Maybe in some lifetime I can really be a devotee. I may really be able to please Krishna. But for now I am only trying to be. I am a sadhaka. Right? That way. So, uh, speaking of sadhakas, there are one such sadhaka, one, sorry, um, one such, she's not a sadhaka, he's a Paramahamsa, uh, Srila Jiva Goswami, who also appeared on this particular day. Uh, Jiva Goswami, a very short pastime, all of us know, um, must have heard about him. Our Shad Goswamis are there, the six Goswamis who are there in the last photo. Uh, so, one of them is Jiva Goswami, the two uh, chief Goswamis in that are Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami and their nephew is Jiva Goswami. So uh, Jiva Goswami is probably the greatest scholar that has walked this earth. Um, all the scriptures that we have today are inspired by Jiva Goswami. Very wonderful um, Vaishnava. So there is, there is another Sampradaya, like our Sampradaya is called the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Uh, so there is another sampradaya called the Bhakti Marga Sampradaya or the Pushti Marga Sampradaya. So these are uh, different sampradaya. So there is one sampradaya uh, called Pushti Marga in that particular line uh, coming down from uh, which was originally called as a Rudra Sampradaya. So from which is or like the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya has come from Lord Brahma. Rudra Sampradaya has come from Lord Shiva, Rudra. So in this particular line there is one Acharya called Vallabhacharya. So Vallabhacharya, he comes and meets Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, who is from the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So they are like brothers at that particular point, both the Sampradayas very closely connected with each other because the mood was very similar. So Rupa Goswami had written a particular scripture and in that, in the translation of that scripture he had mentioned that both Bhukti and Mukti are like Pichachini. Pichachini means a witch. Any of you have seen one? No, right? Hope you never see one also. <laughs> Hope you never see one. <laughs> okay. So, a, a witch. Okay. So, she is a witch. Pichachini. Like Putana. Putana is a, is a Pichachini. Right? Like that. So, um, now, um, so he compares bhukti and mukti to a pichachin. What is bhukti? Mukti means liberation. liberation. Bhukti means enjoyment in this world. So Vallabhacharya, when he comes and reads what Rupa Goswami has written, he says, it's nice, but if I can correct you in one small thing, in my opinion, bhukti I understand. You say it's like a witch, very dangerous for a, for a devotee, you know, sense gratification, like drinking alcohol, this, that. A devotee will never do that. Um, but why mukti? You know, uh, mukti is not that bad, is it? I mean, everybody is looking for ultimately, you know, mukti. So Rupa Goswami says, okay, because uh, Vallabhacharya is a very senior person in age and all of that. So he says, yes, certainly, I accept my mistake. But Jiva Goswami, who was a very young boy at that time cleaning and all that, he saw that his guru, Rupa Goswami, is apologizing. He says, there is no mistake in what he has done. But how can I correct Vallabhacharya? So he says, okay, but I can't do it in front of Rupa Goswami, but I'll do it later. So when, um, when Vallabhacharya was leaving, Jiva Goswami said, I will drop you to the gate. You know, sometimes relatives come, they go to the gate. So I'll drop you to the, to the gate. So he says, yeah, yeah, please come. So uh, little Jiva, went along with Vallabhacharya and he told Vallabhacharya, if I can just share one thing. So he says, yes, please tell me. He says, my Guru Rupa Goswami had written Bhukti and Mukti to be 
um, equal to a witch for a for a devotee. There is nothing wrong with that. He says, really? So please tell me how. He says, Mukti, under, you understand that we don't. But Mukti also, what is Mukti? Mukti means the Advaita Mukti is when a Jiva, after we die, the soul merges with Brahman. You and Brahman become one. There is no difference. Just like a drop of sea water enters the sea and then it is one with the sea. That is called as Mukti. So he says, even this Mukti is very dangerous for a Vaishnava. Because we don't want Mukti also. Because the moment I have Mukti, I am one with Krishna, then where is the opportunity for me to serve Krishna? I will not be able to, I don't want to become Krishna, I don't want to become one with Krishna, I want to always be in the service of Krishna. And that is why that is even more dangerous than Bhukti. Mukti is even more dangerous than Bhukti. And Vallabhacharya, he got this perspective from Jiva Goswami. He says, you are absolutely right. Because you see, this is how great uh, sadhus are. Not like people who fight on YouTube comments and all that. Nothing like that. Because the moment he, you tell him, give him a new perspective, this is called intellectual humility. They will accept it. They say, yes, your, your perspective is better than mine. So he says, thank you. Thank you for this. He accepted that from a small boy, Jiva Goswami. And he goes away. And he comes back the next day and he meets Rupa Goswami. And he discusses, he says, you know, uh, they had some discussion. And after that, he tells him, you know that boy who is here, Jiva, take very good care of him. So Rupa Goswami said, yeah, uh, but why? He says, he's a very great scholar. He gave me a perspective yesterday about, I found fault in yours. Why didn't you correct me? You know, he corrected me so nicely. So Rupa Goswami said, okay, I apologize if he has crossed any line or anything. So he, he says, no, 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 not at all. I'm not at all offended. And he goes away after that. And Rupa Goswami calls Jiva Goswami that day. And he tells him that uh, they were living in Vrindavan. They said, uh, Rupa Goswami told Jiva Goswami, you have no qualification to live in Vrindavan. He says, but what did I do? He says, you dare to correct a superior like Vallabhacharya. You dare to correct him. You think I couldn't have corrected him? So he, is, he just gave his perspective. Who are you to correct him? You're a student. You're supposed to be here and do your service. This is not, this is not the right mood. So um, Jiva Goswami did not argue, for oh, you I did this, if we were there, we would have done that, no? He told, I told, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, not Jiva Goswami. Uh, Jiva Goswami did not do that. He immediately said, yes, I'm a fool. I, uh, I shouldn't have done that. And uh, I, maybe I was only trying to show off that I know something great and you know, I, it's punishable. He says, yes, a, a Rajavasi, a true resident of Vrindavan should not have this mood. So immediately, I banish you from Vrindavan. Go away. So he goes away from Vrindavan and he stays in Mathura. But after this, he did not uh, you know, just joyfully live there eating and enjoying. There, so much work, sweeping, cleaning, uh, here, I'll just enjoy no, nothing. He stopped eating and he stopped sleeping. And in, in course of time, it was nearly one year, he would eat very little, little bit of buttermilk, little bit of this, that. And he had become very lean. He was just skin and bone. And he was always crying and always weeping. And when Sanatana Goswami, the elder brother of Rupa Goswami, once he traveled to Mathura, somebody told him, can you see there is one sadhu boy who is always crying? Somebody in Mathura told. Uh, so he says, who is this boy? He is a, he's a devotee, but he's always weeping. Can you go and meet him? So he goes and sees, he says, uh, I mean, those days, you know, uh, there is no social media, so you couldn't, uh, otherwise today we would have done no, some selfie in Mathura or something, you know, so people would know I'm in Mathura. So those days, nothing. So Jiva Goswami was there. There was no way to identify where he is. So they, uh, only after this time, he found out that he is in Mathura. He says, what are you doing? He said, I have no qualification to go back. I'm just living here. I'm just waiting for, for death to come. Someday I will die. Because I have no life without the association of Rupa Goswami and you, Sanatana Goswami. He says, don't worry. Just come with me. And he takes him back. And on his recommendation, Rupa Goswami says, uh, okay, I'm going to keep you back. And Rupa Goswami also had tears in his eyes. And this is, it is also true that Rupa Goswami himself uh, ate very little because he could not also eat without the association of Jiva Goswami. Then why do something like this? It is because 
Rupa Goswami is perfect, Vallabhacharya is perfect, Jiva Goswami is perfect. But all of them together are teaching us lessons about etiquette, about character, about how we need to conduct ourselves in front of our, our elders and, and our teachers and our superiors. Right? Uh, it's also important that we learn from Vallabhacharya of how superiors are supposed to behave also. It's not that they can do whatever they want to. Superiors also need to conduct themselves with, uh, with uh, an open heart and give an opportunity for young people to speak and listen to their perspectives. This is something that we learn from Vallabhacharya. But we also learn um, etiquettes, lines, boundaries that we shouldn't cross as uh, from uh, Jiva Goswami too. Right? So these are a few things that we learn. So this is the great Jiva Goswami who later, after the departure, uh, physical departure of Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami becomes the head of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas at that particular point. But there's so much more to talk about Jiva Goswami. Um, but um, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop talking about Jiva Goswami now.